Well, hello again, everybody. Well, just recently I've been doing some stuff at work using some uh, instrumentation. And this uh, particular test gear that we're using, it can output a string of RS232, basically, um, as a record of any measurements it's taking, with the idea being that you can connect um, a computer to it to log the information that it's outputting. Well, unfortunately, because of the, uh, the remote nature and also the quantity of um, these data logger devices that we, we need to install, it's not really appropriate to, to use a laptop or something like that. So I was on the lookout for some devices which would um, record a string of RS232 and uh, you know write it to a, a little micro SD card or something like that. Well, interestingly enough, nothing really came to hand. I assumed there'd be hundreds of units which would uh, you know take an RS232 uh, string and write it you know write it to a, a memory card or a USB stick. But yeah, nothing readily came to hand. Um, I did find a few devices out there, but they were they're very expensive. And because of the number of devices that we need, it would have just been a bit prohibitive because, you know, I need about 20 of these things. So this little board here uses the uh, Atmel Mega A328P microcontroller. And uh, what this thing will accept, it will take in basically a UART string, which is at TTL level. And it will just record it to uh, a little SD card, which is installed on the other side of the board. So let me just show you that. Let me get that picture up. So basically, inside here, you uh, you just put a little miniature SD card, and then you squirt serial data to it using this. I think it's the uh, the RXI, which is a uh, received data in, and uh, it will it'll write that received string of data to the SD card, and then a few months later, you can come and uh, take the SD card out put it into your computer and read all the recorded data of it. So it was it was almost just the job. But right away I did encounter a couple of problems. One of the problems was this one. Unfortunately they're on a back order at the moment so uh, I couldn't order them readily. Now problem two is that these are uh, 14 95 each plus shipping and uh, to be honest, because I wanted about 10 or 20 of these, it, it was still getting a little bit prohibitively expensive because it's a fair chance we're going to maybe lose some of these and not get them back. So I, I didn't want to spend too much money. I guess basically what I'm saying is I'm a bit tight. So I went looking for uh, an alternative. Now it's probably worth just saying before everybody jumps on me, uh, these devices are manufactured and programmed by SparkFun. And uh, yes, absolutely no problem with that. I'm sure that Spark fun do a great job i bought stuff from them in the past and i will do in the future but this particular device is a it is all open source hardware and open source software all the information is uh, is published and is available on the web so this is a schematic of the open log device as you can see there's really not very much on it so let's have a quick walk around well the main thing on the board is this uh, 80 mega 328p and uh, as I said, that's the, uh, the microcontroller, and that's, uh, that's actually a program to take a string of RS232 data in and actually write it to an ST card. So to help it do that, let's just have a look at what we've got. We've got a 16 megahertz crystal. Uh, we've got a decoupling capacitor. We've got a couple of LEDs down here, which I've got to admit, I've noticed that when this thing is uh, receiving data, they do tend to uh, flash on and off. But I'm not exactly sure what the uh, what the functionality of these green and blue LEDs is. It's not actually very well described. Now, the power supply to this board, um, I seem to think it's basically anything between about 5 and 12 volts. Because it has a little built-in regulator here, a little linear regulator, which drops everything down to 3.3 volts. Now this, uh, this little box here, as it says here, this is the micro SD socket. So that's what we plug our little SD card into, and that's what we're going to write our um, serial data, our received data. We're going we're gonna to write that to a micro SD card. But one thing to, uh, to point out, that this, is a, this IC here is effectively working at, well, it's 3.3 volts, but I think these work happily at 5 volts. It will accept TTL level logic. So... It's not actually expecting, uh, you know, RS232. It's not actually expecting UART TTL type voltage levels. So 
you can't actually just plug plug in uh, a standard you know rs232 port you can't just plug that into the device because the voltage levels are wrong so we need to convert from rs232 to ttl and uh, again because i just wanted to do something quick and dirty and i didn't have time to roll my own circuit board i just went uh, on ebay and found something off the shelf so let's have a look at that well, if you do a search on RS232 to TTL converters, uh, what comes up is another little circuit board here which has got, you know, the generic 9-pin DB9 serial connector on it. And it's also got the, uh, let's call it the infamous MAX232 chip. What that will do is it'll convert the incoming RS232 which comes in on the 9-way connector. And uh, then we've got some pins here and uh, it will it'll convert them to TTL level and squirt them out so all we actually have to do is we we've got to connect this RS232 to TTL convert we've got to connect this board to our little open logger device put a 5 volt power supply on it jobs are good and up and running off we go happy days well that's what I thought anyway well because of the fact these are on back order and the uh, the $14 price tag plus shipping uh, yeah, I wasn't having that, so I needed to go uh, searching on eBay, so let's do that. Well, as you can see, these open log devices, they're available from a, a wide range of uh, sellers on, on eBay, and uh, you don't need to pay very much of them. I mean, we've got one there at £3.55 and uh, yeah, up to £8. Um, yeah, not, not very much money anyway. And because I didn't necessarily need these in a hurry, I just bought the cheapest. And uh, I can't actually see the listing. I think the listing that I actually bought them off has gone now. But I think I literally, I paid about pound eighty for these open loggers. And uh, I bought about 20 of them and, uh, you know, rubbed my hands together at the huge saving that I was making. And, uh, you know, was very happy about that. So, you know, placed my order with eBay. And uh, a couple of weeks later, a big bag of these open loggers arrived and I, I built a couple of these up and uh, well couldn't get it to work so now we're going to have to go down the rabbit hole so let's just have a look at how these open logs arrived uh, care of uh, China Post so I bought quite a few of them and I've actually already unwrapped some of them to play with uh, let's get one out for you so here's the open log that we've uh, unwrapped and uh, I've just got that next to uh, a penny for those in Britain that want to know an idea of the scale of it, it's uh, well, it's actually about the size of a penny, isn't it? So we're about 18.7 millimeters by 15.2, so 18 by 15. So in the packaging, along with the actual open log device, you, it comes with uh, a header, which basically you just need to solder that in, depending on which way you're going to put it put on your board. Um, not sure which way it's designed to go up. I think it was designed to go up this way up with the words open log at the top because it's got some LEDs on it and you would want them to be visible. So if we just turn it over you can see there's actually an SD card socket underneath and uh, I'll just see if I can bring you in and just show you how that works. So I'll just turn it over and uh, there's the SD socket and here's um, a miniature SD card and uh, I think you've got to kind of put it in upside down. Have I got it the right way around? Yeah, there we go. So you, you basically you uh, you plug this little thing in your sir in your circuit. It records the RS two three two and it write, writes it to this little SD card. And then you can take the SD card out, put it in an adapter, stick it in your laptop, and read all the data off it. So it's uh yeah it's, oops, it's upside down. I don't know. Oop, keep getting it wrong. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, quite a handy little device, isn't it? So I've just loosely cobbled one of these together on a piece of uh, breadboard and you can see that um, this is the RS232 to TTL converter and we've got that connected to the open log and uh, this is the transmit and the receive line. So you've actually got, just for the connections on here if anybody wants to know, I've got RXD on this side which is uh, receive data and that's connected to RXI on the open log which stands for receive data input. And then we've got, on the open log side here, the yellow wire, we've got TXO, which is transmit data out, and that's going into transmit data on the uh, on this little uh, 
RS232 to 232 converter. And as I said earlier, this has got very little on it. It's just got a Max 232 chip. Both of these devices are powered up from the lab power supply and we're just running at 5 volts at the moment. So just to actually get some information to log, I've just plugged in. It's kind of a serial madness, isn't it? So we've got USB to serial, turning it into... Uh, sorry, we've got USB to rs232 then we're going back from rs232 to tl and then we're going to squirt that into the log so it's all a bit convoluted here but i've got it plugged into the laptop and i'm just running a terminal program on the laptop so that we can uh, we can squirt some data into the open log and in theory log it first of all we're just going to pop our sd card in so let's do that uh, it is a bit fiddly this Oh. Ah. Oh. That's better. Just lost my SD card virginity there. So we're just using this real term terminal program to squirt some uh, serial commands to our logger and hopefully it's going to uh, it's going to log them for us and at the moment the uh, the serial string that we're going to transmit we're going to say the uh, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog one two three four five six seven eight nine and zero we're uh, just look at some of the settings on here uh, we are set up for let's just check the port configuration so we're on 9600 board we've got no parity parity none data bits eight Go back to the send menu and uh, press send ASCII string. Well, I've set up the oscilloscope here and we're just using it to take a sniff of the incoming uh, serial data. So you can see as I just press the send button on the computer, it's actually uh, receiving the new serial string and it's just decoding it on the fly here. And uh, well, basically it's translating it so I can see some of the characters there. I can see lazy dog one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and zero. So we're definitely transmitting some uh, some valid serial data to the open log. So let's just turn the power off. We'll pop out our little SD card and we should have recorded all that data on the uh, on the SD card and we'll plug that into the computer and we'll have a look. And for the computer I'm using, uh, it won't take this little micro SD card. We've just got to put it into an adapter. So we'll do that. And uh, it's on drive D. It's opened up as drive D. So if we just look at there and we get um, hmm, nothing, not sausage, nil, zero, bugger all. Now according to my little quick test there, we should have recorded that serial string of data. We should have recorded that onto the SD card and been able to read it back using the computer, but that didn't happen. Well, I've also been doing a little bit of reading um, from the Sparkfun website via a link to the GitHub site where all the information and the documentation for this is stored. And it, it gives you a little bit more information, things like um, it uses a configuration file, and if you don't put a configuration file on the SD card, the actual microcontroller, it will look for that when it starts up, and if it doesn't find one, it will create one automatically. And uh, it creates a file called config.txt. Well, that file didn't get created. And we've also got a few uh, LEDs. I think there's one there, there's one there, and I think there might be another one somewhere else. There's at least, I can see two LEDs on this board anyway, a couple of cross corners here, one there and one there. And again, just looking at the instructions, what should have been happening is as we were receiving the data, these LEDs should have been blinking and, you know, just doing stuff, mate. And it should have done stuff when we inserted SD cards and things like that. So all that leads me to believe that there's, uh, you know, there's something not right with our circuit. Well, I've done the, uh, you know, I've done the obvious things that you do. I've checked the five volt supplies and stuff like that. And I also tried uh, a few of these open log devices. And uh, yeah, they all appear to do exactly the same thing, which is uh, zilch. All of them do nothing. So we've got a problem somewhere and uh, we need to find out what it is. Well, I'm just having a little bit of a probe round at the moment. I haven't got the circuit diagram in front of me, but I can see we've got a 16 megahertz uh, crystal oscillator on here. 
and uh, it's connected to one of the pins at this side of the uh, uh, Atmel uh, AT328, the Mica controller. So what I'm doing is I'm just I'm just looking at the oscilloscope at the moment. I'm just probing all these pins at the moment, and uh, I'm just looking basically for any activity, and uh, I'm not getting anything. Again nothing so it appears that the uh the oscillator is is not running it's not it's not doing anything i've actually been around all the pins and there's a uh, there's nothing happening so although there could be a lot of things wrong with this my suspicion is um we bought the hardware from china but the way it's been delivered is that um there's no software in these devices they're totally unprogrammed. Now the way that you would probably program these devices, and uh, we're going to go on to this, is that there should be some in-circuit programming connections here at the top of the board. And uh, I can see that there is something there, but whatever they are is underneath the, um, the solder mask. So I, I'm suspecting that these boards have got no software in them. They've, uh, they've never been programmed. So what we need to do now is we need to put some software in them. Well, I think I said earlier, this OpenLog project, it's, uh, it's all open source, and it was actually developed around or based on um, using the Arduino IDE. So it was basically written and compiled um, using the Arduino IDE. Because the Arduinos, or particularly this Uno, it uses the same Atmel microprocessor. Now, I'm not going to pretend to know anything about Arduino. I actually bought these about five years ago, and I've... Uh, I've never even uh, plugged them in because, well, I just haven't got around to it like so many other things in life. So if I actually look at this uh, Arduino board, I can actually see that it's got, um, well, I'm looking at it at the moment, and uh, you probably won't be able to make it out. I'm going to bring the magnifying glass in. It's got an 80 mega 328p, which is just exactly the same microcontroller that our uh, OpenLog device is using. But you can see there's a few, quite a few other things on it. I mean, we've got a 16 megahertz uh, uh, clock crystal, which is the same. But we've got quite a lot of other devices. And one of the most important thing is the, uh, effectively, I think what is probably something like an FTDI chip here. Again, yet another serial to um, another serial USB serial converter chip. So the way you actually program an Uno board is you just plug a USB cable directly into it and uh, download the code to it and off you go but this uh, little open log device as you can see there's quite a bit of difference between between this this uh, arduino board and the open log board i mean we've got the same microprocessor but all these other support chips that go in that that go together to allow you to be able to use the uh, arduino ide to program it that you know they're not existent they're not there so you know the first problem is i can't just plug a usb cable into this open log device and program it you've got to use uh well you've got to use another uh, usb to serial uh converter so let's get one of them out and uh have a go at that so here is an actual ftdi cable made by ftdi themselves not even a not even a cheap chinese copy and uh Obviously, this would be my go-to programming lead because, uh, you know, you plug this into one end of the computer and we get our TTL out of here. We're doing a lot of serial on this video, aren't we? I didn't... Yeah, it's totally serial, isn't it? Um, anyway, so obviously what we would want to do is plug this into uh, here and uh, download our code from our Arduino IDE. And uh, I tried that and it didn't work. So, well, why didn't it work? Well... Actually, it didn't work for a couple of reasons, but one of the main reasons is the standard FTTI cables that I've got here, they don't actually break out all the, uh, all the pins you require. I mean, you've got the typical things like you've got, you've got your 5 volts, you've got your transmit and your receive. Uh, I can't remember what the other pins are, but you do actually, there's one, min, there's one pin which isn't broken out here, which you need to program these uh, Arduino type devices. Um, because what you need to be able to do is you need to be able to reset the microprocessor as you start to write to it. Now the way that they choose to do that use on the Arduino stuff is uh, 
you actually need a special serial pin which they call DTR. So I've got another of these USB to serial interfaces here. So it does very much it does very much the same thing as the FTDI cable, but it just breaks out this extra pin, this uh, this DTR pin. And like I say, what it's actually used to do is when we try to squirt the serial code from the Arduino ID, IDE, I think it holds it in reset, um, something along that lines. Again, I'm not exactly sure because I'm not an Arduino person, but we need to have this pin, we need to have it connected. And uh, a, standard F, uh, a standard FTDI cable, or at least the standard cables I carry, they don't have these pins. But again, I'll put some links on Amazon. It seems like quite a good little... Uh, programming tool there's quite a good little converter I think uh, the proper F FTDI cables like I just showed you that I think they're about 12 or 13 pounds from RS components but I think I downloaded sorry I think I've not downloaded I think I bought this uh, this little programmer this little uh, converter from uh, off Amazon uh, off Amazon Prime and uh, I think it was like one pound fifty and it arrived in like a couple of days or something and uh, just so it doesn't slide across my bench and short short out on something i've just hot melt glued it down to a piece of plastic so that that's all that is nothing exciting so anyway what we need to do next is we need to plug in our programmer and we need to download our software from our uh, arduino ide i hope you're all taking notes because i'm not going to go through this again so txo that's transmit out and we need to put that into the receive input of our open log device. We've done that. And then we've got RXI, which is receive input, and we've got to connect that to transmit out of the open log. Ooh, got that in the wrong place. That was a good start, wasn't it? And it's got a couple of pins left. It's got CTS, which... Uh, I mm, can't remember what CTS is, but we've got this DTR wire. This is the one we need DTR. I think DTR stands for Data Terminal Ready. It's one of these, uh, well, get It's one of them pins you used to find on our old RS232 25-way connectors. God knows what it did. It was um, probably some throwback to the days of teleprinters and stuff like that. But it's actually used uh, on the on this like Arduino type device, it's actually used to actually reset the processor. So it it starts, it resets it, and then it will start to uh, accept the Arduino sketch that we're going to try to download it. I, I don't know if I used that word before, Arduino sketch. In, in the, the Arduino world, apparently, uh, and this is new to me, they call sketches the software. So if you talk about downloading a sketch, what, what they're actually talking about is you're downloading software into the, uh, into the Arduino. As I say, this isn't actually a true Arduino, but it uses the same microcontroller that the Arduinos use, or what, one, of the, one of the family of microcontrollers. So, yeah, so we need to plug this in, this DTR, and it goes onto the connection here, which is actually marked up with the, uh, the word green. I don't know why it says green on it. Um, I think it's something to do with using a green wire again in the Arduino world, but we haven't got a green wire, we've got a purple wire, so let's plug that in. Okay, so I've just opened up the Arduino IDE, and uh, IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. Basically, it's just a programming tool which you can use to write the software for the Arduino, and it will also compile the software and download it. And I think they call it integrated because in the past, if you when you used to write stuff for microcontrollers and microprocessors you used to have a, a whole range of different software applications you had to use you had to uh, you know have compilers and then you'd run linkers and then you'd have to pass it to a separate programming tool to download the file uh, so yeah they use something called an IDE integrate development environment so what I've done is I've, I've done, I went online and I just got a copy of the open log uh, software, the open log sketch, and you can get that from uh, GitHub, and uh, all the links are provided on the uh, Sparkfun website to get that. Now, apparently, this open log code here it does actually use some custom libraries, it doesn't use the standard Arduino libraries. So, what you have to do is again, you've got to go and download those libraries, and you've also got to add them to the, uh, the Arduino IDE so that the, uh, the compiler knows to use those libraries instead of the default ones that the, the uh, product comes with and uh, 
Again, there's information of how to do that on the Sparkfun website. Again, it's a little bit tedious, but it only takes you a few seconds. It's one of them things that seems a bit daunting until you've done it, and then you worry what all the fuss was about. So, uh, yeah, lots of waffle. So we've got our programmer plugged in now. Um, what do we need? We need to select the COM port. Well, it, it knows it's on COM5. So far, so good. Uh, we've got to select our, our device that we're trying to program. And uh, it's already got that right here. It's an 80 mega 3 to 8p, 5 volts, 16 megahertz. So all oh, that's lovely. Yeah, we've got the 16 megahertz selected there. So in theory, all we've got to do now, we've just got to press the upload button, and it's going to uh, it's going to compile the software first of all, and then it's going to squirt it down to our microcontroller on the little board, and all will be well. So let's uh, let's do that. And it's compiling. So we have at least got a little bit of progress on the space cat bar. Dum -de -dum -dum. Dum -de -dum. <laughs> nope. Something happening, maybe. Nope. Nothing happening yet. Come on, you can do it. Some considerable time later, still nothing happening. Dum -dum -de -dum. Still compiling the sketch. Oh, something's happening. Come on, you can do it. Uploading. Come on, you can do it. But da Okay, programmer is not responding. So okay, we've just tried to download the Arduino sketch and uh, it didn't work. Mm -hmm.